So when, when you look across the economy, Andy, where do you think the Internet of Things is having the most impact today? And where do you think it'll have the most impact in the future? Um, it, it, impact um, happens everywhere. I think every business can utilize it either to transform their businesses or to make them more efficient. So, so I will answer the question, but, but I, you know, the, the context for me is there are usually three or four major business benefits to IoT projects. The first and by far the one that most projects start is about gaining efficiencies within your company. How do I use IoT to make better machines, save more fuel on my, on my fleet of trucks, you know, reduce the energy consumed in my buildings, in my data center, whatever it is. So, or, you know, manufacturing, how do I make my processes better so I can increase the yield of whatever my output is? In smart agriculture, in smart agriculture how do I get a higher yield of my product? So that's still, for me, an efficiency gain within, within the customer environment. The second major business um, model that we see is enhancing the product. So how do I use IoT to make a better product? So I mean, if you're, you know, a, a tractor um, company, how do I make, you know, how do I embed intelligence into my tractor so that, you know, it can self-drive over the field, it knows exactly, you know, what to spray at which part of the field, you know, and so, so the product now, the tractor is a better tractor than, you know, the, 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 what the competitors have. Um, and, then, and then the third, and this is where it gets super exciting, is net new revenue models as a consequence of all of this technology. So we have customers that were in the business of, you know, building, let's use elevators, you know, they were building steel cages that move people up and down buildings. Um, and now they're transforming, their, or they, they have the aspirations to transform and be in the business of providing rides per floor per person um, on an OPEX model versus a CAPEX-based model. But then they can now go into different re revenue streams, like if they own the elevators rather than sell them, then they can you know, go into revenue streams like digital signage and they can be in the advertising business. So you think about companies that were making steel cages for people you know, could in the future be in you know, competing against Google and Facebook for eyeballs and, and, and ad revenue. So that, that's the context of you know, disruption and, and usage. <clears throat> I think the ones that you know, we're focused on um, and the most impact is uh, oil and gas, um, you know, have a huge amount to do. Like the digital oil field, I think is is really big right now. And, and how do you collect all of this data from the oil uh, rigs so that you can do predictive maintenance? If oil is at you know fifty dollars a barrel, that's probably a good time to go. You know, do your maintenance. If it's up at one hundred and twenty dollars a barrel, then you just want your machinery pumping out oil as fast as you can. Well, IoT technology can help determine when you do your maintenance cycles based on the price of oil. You know, that's just a, a great example. So I think oil and gas or, or sort of energy sector in general is just prime and, and, and it's, you know, high tech, you know, really enhances that, that efficiency and that new revenue model. Um, manufacturing is the other huge one um, because, you know, everybody's looking for that edge on efficiency gains. And then I think smart agriculture is is another great one, but but it, it's we actually see more of use cases that cross multiple industries. So for instance, monitoring high value assets and doing predictive maintenance on them spans many many different verticals. You can do that in manufacturing, you can do it in oil and gas, you can do it in energy, you can do it in retail, you know, supply chain. So a lot of these cross many of those traditional verticals. The other one that I think has huge, huge potential in the world is everything around retail um, and, and the supply chain of, of, of food. In fact, you know, we waste 30% as a human race, we waste 30% of all food that we produce. And in the developed world, um, and I know there's a finer line between the developed and the developing world, so I don't like to use that terminology, but let's say in Big economies like the US, the UK, Germany, most of that food waste is consumers throwing it away. But in, the, in some of the emerging uh, countries, a lot of that is, is wasted through the production cycle and a huge amount is wasted through the transportation of food. It's getting stuck in the wrong place. 
if it needs to be cold and frozen, then the supply chain sometimes unfreezes it and it gets wasted. Well, you know, just think about how sensors and collection of data can solve that problem. Now you can, you know exactly, and blockchain will play in here nicely as well, but now you know exactly where the food was produced, if it's, if it's you know, been transported across the world, is it still at the right temperature? If, it's, if that temperature is falling, you can go and proactively do something about it. If your truck breaks down and it's got frozen food in the back, I know about that. I will know about it before it happens, and I can go, as the transport company, go and make you know, actual um, decisions and, and take action to go save that. So I think it's, it's sort of everywhere, but we're excited about, you know, energy. We're excited about transportation and cold supply chain. We're really excited about smart agriculture and how that can help increase yields and, and then predictive maintenance across all of those types of industries.